Let us discuss the BIM project execution plan next. To successfully implement the virtual design and construction for a project, a project team must perform detailed and comprehensive planning. A well-documented BIM project execution plan will ensure that all the different stakeholders are clearly aware of the opportunities and responsibilities associated with the incorporation of BIM into the project workflow. BIM is the backbone of any VDC, so we need to incorporate BIM. A BIM project execution plan should define the appropriate use for BIM on the project. For example, design authoring, cost estimating, or design coordination. Along with a detailed design and documentation of the process for executing BIM throughout a project life cycle. Once the plan is created, the team can follow and monitor their progress against this plan to gain the maximum benefit from BDC implementation. Let us take a closer look at how do we come up with this BIM project execu execution plan next. Here are five key reasons for developing the BIM project execution plan. Firstly, it is to ensure that all the different parties they are aware of their responsibilities associated with incorporating the BIM into the uh, project workflow. The second reason is the, the plan will allow okay, a proper definition of uh, users of BIM in the project along with detailed design documentation of process for BIM execution throughout the project life cycle. And once you have the uh, plan, the project team members can monitor their progress against this plan for BIM implementation. It will also define the scope of BIM implementation on the project. Lastly, it identifies the process flow for BIM tasks it defines the information exchange between the various parties and it describes the required project and company infrastructure needed in order to support the implementation of the plan. What value will the uh, BIM project execution plan give to the team? Well, if there is a proper plan in place, all the parties will clearly understand and be able to communicate the strategic goals for implementing BIM on the project. The organizations will understand their roles and responsibility in the implementation. The team will be able to design an execution process which is well suited for each team member's business practices and typical organization workflows. The plan will also outline the additional resources, training, and other competencies necessary to allow the successful implementation of BIM for the required use. And this plan can also be a benchmark for describing the process to future participants who joins the project. In addition, the purchasing divisions will be able to define the contract language to ensure that all project participants fulfill their obligations and the baseline plan will provide a goal for measuring progress throughout the project. There are altogether four steps to take in order to complete the uh, uh, forming of the BIM project execution plan. So the first step is to identify the BIM goals and users. That is to define the project and uh, team value through the identification of uh, BIM goals and the uh, users. Now, the different stakeholders will appoint a representative and then get the uh, representative to uh, come in to go through this first step. And uh, there could be a need to have more than one meeting or a series of meetings in order to complete this particular step. 
So let's go into more detail on uh, what entails this particular step okay, in the BIM project execution plan procedure. A typical design life cycle for a project could include, for example, the initial planning stage, then goes on to the design stage, and then the construction stage, and finally the operation stage. Throughout the different phases or the different stage, there will be different types of uh, uses that uh, we can think of when we are using the uh, BIM. So during the uh, first step, where we want to identify the BIM goals and the users, the different stakeholders, they will come in to decide for themselves for that particular project, okay, what is it during each one of the stages that they are actually looking for in terms of uh, BIM. Okay? Oh, so for example, during the uh, planning phase, maybe uh, the stakeholders agree that the primary BIM use could be to, uh, you know, uh, allow for modeling of uh, the existing condition to allow for cost estimation for this uh, phase planning for programming for site analysis all right and subsequently when the planning becomes more detailed okay you can start to have uh, this uh, commencement of the design reviews for the major discipline like the uh, architecture uh, mechanical electrical structural so on and so forth and when we go on to the design phase, some of the uh, ongoing uh, this, uh, uh, important BIM users may still be uh, brought over to the next stage, but we may have uh, new BIM users that we find critical for the project to be uh, smoothly uh, implemented. For example, we may need to then start to do design, so then we need to have a process where we take charge, okay? of the, the, the design for the different stakeholders or we want to do uh, energy analysis for uh, our building yeah and then after that uh, there may be other things that the uh, different stakeholders may want to do they want may need to uh, carry out a structural analysis for the uh, building lighting analysis mechanical analysis so and so forth yeah oh, so you can divide okay the uh, beam users to something that uh, you know is a uh, primary versus secondary so that you can devote more uh, resources okay to things that are more critical or primary okay same thing when we go on to the construction stages okay so in the construction phase maybe uh, this uh, coordination become more and more important so we want to make use of the beam to allow the different parties to be able to coordinate in a more seamless manner so that becomes very important yeah Oh, and obviously, the from the contractor's point of view, site utilization is very important. They may want to use the BIM model to allow a more effective uh, this uh, site utilization plan. Okay, yeah. Oh, then you may have uh, this uh, digital fabrication, so and so forth. And finally, when it is in the operational stage, okay, the record of the model will be important. But uh, we also want to, uh, for example, allow okay maintenance scheduling know the uh, building system analysis so and so forth and we can also use beam okay to achieve all this yeah so that all starts from the beginning stage where we identify what do we want to use the beam for in the project and specifically what type of users for that particular beam model within each phase of the project life cycle you can also use a uh, typical template to further record down the type of uh, BIM goals or BIM users that uh, you want to achieve and who are the uh, potential stakeholders that is going to use that particular BIM model as well as uh, the uh, priority. Okay, uh, so the priority will allow you to then decide you know, how to allocate your resources. So in this case, uh, from this uh, sample, uh, this uh, example, uh, it is uh, indicated that uh, the uh, one of the priority, for example, is to have an accurate 3D record model for the facility maintenance team. So if let's say the various stakeholders come in and agree that this is one of the project goals, okay, that is a high priority, more resources will be allocated to achieve this particular goal compared to something uh, 
in relation to uh, say a uh, uh, priority number three, for example, okay, or increase the effectiveness of the design. Yeah. Oh, so when you attach the priority to your beam goals, that will allow you to then allocate the required resources. Yeah, and at the same time, you can also see for yourself who are the users. Okay, oh, for that particular beam model or that particular once the beam goal is achieved. Okay, all right. Oh, or what is the required uh, this uh, use? Okay, yeah. So that is a, a, a typical template. Once you have identified the list of uh, beam goals that uh, you want to uh, achieve at the different phases of the project life cycle, as well as the priority, then you can go on okay, to uh, provide more uh, this uh, detailed uh, insight into all these uh, beam goals. And you can use uh, a sample template, uh, you know, in this case here, that uh, get you to uh, fill in, okay, or the type of uh, these uh, beam goals or beam use that uh, you want to achieve, yeah, followed by your priority, followed by who is responsible, okay, and the value to the responsible party, as well as the capability of the party to implement and achieve the particular beam goals. And also for you to put in what other resources you need in order to achieve the particular beam goals. And then you can put down the remarks. And finally, the team can then decide, okay, given all this uh, you know, uh, information, do we really want to proceed to go ahead or maybe we don't want to go ahead, all right? Like for example, if let's say the priority, okay, is to use the beam, okay, to uh, record the model and that the team established, okay, as a very high value to the project, yeah, then the team needs to decide, okay, for this particular beam use to be, uh, you know, achieved, who are the parties that is going to be responsible? in order to achieve this particular goal. So for example, that could be uh, due to the uh, contractor, the facility manager, as well as the designer. So we will then put down okay, all the different parties that is responsible in order to achieve this goal. And then after that, we will try to find out okay, for all these parties, okay, what will be the value okay, of uh, this uh, beam use? Okay, that means uh, recording the model to all these parties. Okay, all right, to see for ourselves whether, you know, is there really a need to do it. Oh, so obviously for the facility manager, okay, the proper recording will be of high importance. Lah, yeah, but for the contractor and the designer may not be so high. Okay, we need to accurately re reflect the, the truth or the reality. Yeah, and at the same time, we will also try to find out, okay, whether the different parties, okay, do they have enough competency to be able to achieve these goals. So it could be a uh, competency in terms of the resources, okay, the technical competency or the experience. And we use a scale of, for example, one is to three to do a rating. All right. So in this case, uh, it is uh, indicated that the contractor in terms of resources is at a competency of two. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, technical competency is at a level of two, experience is at a level of two. And the team may feel that, uh, well, that is not enough. Okay, we need to then have a uh, training, okay, or training and uh, this uh, providing the software to the contractor okay yeah so same thing for the uh, facility manager okay they can put down their this uh, uh, capability and then after that the team can then decide whether is there any need for any more resources to be uh, given to this particular party in order to allow him to achieve this particular beam goal and then finally the team can decide whether do they want to move ahead or not and you do it for the rest of your this uh, uh, beam use that you have decided uh, initially. Okay, so it's kind of an iterative process. So to summarize, okay, the first step is to identify the beam goals and the users. And although uh, you know uh, we we put down that it's a first step, but this first step can require a series of meetings over a period of time. Okay, it may not be all completed within uh, one session. Okay. But uh, during this particular step, okay, we will typically get the senior uh, management, okay, the beam management staff to be involved because uh, they will be able to provide more input. And these are the typical agendas lah, okay, uh, for this series of uh, meetings for this first step. 